Hey guys, it's Faith here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. All right, so today I have a little how-to video for you all. Since this self-isolation period, self-timer photo shoots have been at an all-time high, especially in my life. So I'm gonna be showing you guys how I do my self-timer photo shoots and how you can get the best possible photos from your phone. All right, so before we get this video started, make sure you give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this in the future. So first things first, whether you're shooting with your phone or your actual camera, you're gonna need a tripod or something in that realm. I use just like a $20 tripod from Amazon. They can get pretty cheap wherever you're looking. And there's obviously more expensive one, but whatever will do, especially if you're using a phone, you can get literally the cheapest one because you don't need like a lot of oomph and quality if you're just holding up your phone with your tripod. But honestly, if you can't afford a tripod right now, you can just set up your phone and camera on a bookshelf, a desk, chairs, boxes, whatever you need to do to get that angle. I know that before I was using an actual tripod, I literally stacked boxes on chairs and things like that. So it's totally possible to work around not having a tripod. All right, so for your camera settings, I'm gonna walk you all through how I specifically tweak my camera settings to get my photos for Instagram and my blog. I use a Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus, so I don't know exactly how it works on iPhones, but it should be similar settings. Um, a phone camera is a phone camera, so it shouldn't be that difficult to set up. My first tip for your camera settings is to always use your back camera, even though you can't see yourself and see how you're posing. It's really going to benefit you to use your back camera because that has the pristine quality. And I know that for galaxies, there's a pro setting that you can use and you can only use that if you're using the back camera. So I definitely recommend using the back camera if you want to get the best photo quality. Also, using the back camera does take a bit more trial and error, but it will definitely benefit you in the long run to have the better camera quality. Alright, so to tweak my camera settings, first I go to the bottom of the screen and I click the more button, and then I click on the pro camera so that I can get the best quality photos. Then I go to my settings, scroll down to the useful features section, then I click on shooting methods, and I turn on voice control. Voice control is super useful if you're going to be shooting with the back camera and you can't see yourself and when you're using voice control you don't have to rush into your pose because the camera is going to take a picture exactly when you tell it to and then next I go to the timer button at the top of the screen and I turn on the two second timer I use the two second timer paired with the voice control settings because normally if I'm using my camera I'll use the 10 second timer but since I'm using the voice control, I don't need too much time to prepare my face and my poses after I've said shoot. And then next we're going to talk about your settings, like your surroundings. <laughs> my first tip is to make sure that your background is super clean. You do not want a messy background for your photos because that is a huge turn off. <laughs> and usually when I'm choosing a spot in my room or outside, I like to make sure that it fits the vibe of my outfit as well. As an example, if you're taking like a fun little spa night, whatever photo shoot and you're in pajamas, maybe you'll want to pose on your bed or somewhere in your room that's super cozy instead of like outside because that doesn't really make sense. <laughs> Just make sure you coordinate your outfit and the vibe of the photo to your actual surroundings so that everything makes sense and is cohesive. And then next up, let's talk angles. Angles are actually extremely important when it comes to photo shoots. They're literally everything. <laughs> the angles that you use can completely change the vibe of the photo. So for example, if you want to elongate your body, you might do a lower angle so that the camera's looking upward at your body so that your legs are the main focus which makes you look longer. Finding the correct angles for your face shape and your body and whatever you like also takes a lot of trial and error as well. So just make sure that you play around with a bunch of different angles so that you find exactly what matches your liking. Personally, I like a bit of a higher up angle because I think that it makes my face look the best. I don't think that I really need to elongate my body most of the time because it already 
looks pretty long usually. I just kind of brush that one to the side. <laughs> and then for posing, posing can be pretty difficult for most people just because a lot of poses that look the best on camera are not the most comfortable or you just aren't used to posing like that. But once again, it just takes a lot of playing around and finding what poses look best for your body and what you like the most for yourself. Once again, you should definitely be using your surroundings to your advantage. You can pose on things, with things, use things as props. It's super helpful. Um, props are extremely useful when posing so your arms and stuff aren't just dangling and being awkward. Posing with props just makes your life so much easier. But yeah, just use literally everything to your advantage. Um, make sure everything is cohesive and makes sense and find out what works best for you. Because at the end of the day, you have to like those photos and if you don't, you're probably not gonna post them or show them to anyone. So then it's just a waste of your time. Just find out what works best for you and you'll be good to go. And then as for editing apps, I recommend using Adobe Lightroom and it's actually free on your phone in both the App Store and the Google Play Store. It just has a lot of things that are super useful. I mean, it's essentially pro editing software, but like, toned down a notch <laughs> because you have to pay for the actual pro editing software. That's what I use to edit my photos and I've been absolutely loving it so far. And if you aren't comfortable using as many settings as Adobe Lightroom has to offer, you can always use VSEO. Um, that's what I used to use to edit my photos, but I've recently upgraded. <laughs> And if you want to add a little pizzazz to your photos, I highly recommend using Unfold. And then last but not least, if you're using a Samsung Galaxy phone, sorry iPhone users, um, there's actually free spot correction, like in the beauty mode editing section. So you don't have to like pay some app to just blur out a pimple that you have for one day. That's what I really like to use when I have pimples or bags in my photos. But yeah. Those are essentially all of the tips that I have to offer for a self-timer photo shoot. Those are all the things that I like to do to get my best photos. So I hope that they helped you guys out for your next self-timer photo shoot. Once again, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please at least think about subscribing because we would love to have you here. And by we, I mean me because I am the only one in this room. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next week.